Hi, my name is Michael Roberts. Welcome to my online gallery. I wanted to introduce myself in this video and tell you a little bit about what you see here, why it's here, what I do, why I do it. Um, this all started about 35 years ago when I made my first visit to New York and visited the Metropolitan Museum of Art and then later that year visited the American Gallery of Art at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And at these two great museums, I first saw the works of Albert Bierstadt and Thomas Moran. Bierstadt was a, a German-born artist. He was a, a painter. He was also a photographer. Um, and um, Thomas Moran was an Englishman. But they both went on early uh, U.S. expeditions. Uh, to, uh, to explore the western part of the United States, particularly the part uh, that was purchased uh, by Thomas Jefferson through the Louisiana Purchase. And at this time there were no transcontinental railroads. Um, to go from the east coast to the west coast, people traveled by ship and went around the interior of the country. Uh, railroads didn't, uh, tr transcontinental railroads did not um, connect until about 1865. Bierstadt made his first trip west in 1859 and Moran shortly thereafter. So these were the part of the, the first uh, European settlers to uh, see places like Yellowstone National Park, uh, the Wind River Range in Wyoming, the Rocky Mountains, Grand Teton area, uh, Grand Canyon. And um, the, the artist's job on these expeditions were to create art, to sketch and do whatever they could in the field and then they would go back uh, during the, the winters and go to their studios in New York City and spend the winters painting. Um, in, these great, in these great museums, you'll see uh, still today featured paintings by these artists of six feet by 10 feet uh, and larger. Um, Moran has a painting in the Smithsonian that's actually eight feet by 14 feet. So I saw these landscapes in the mid 80s and was just blown away. Um, by the, um, the artistry, the craftsmanship that went into these paintings, as well as the imagination. Because they didn't just set out to document what they saw, um, but to uh, trans transform it uh, into, you know, using their, their imagination into a scene that represented their ideals as an artist. And they both um, evolved from uh, the American School of Art, known as the Hudson River School of Art, and, um, and Bierstadt and Moran, with a few other artists like Richard Hill, uh, also formed a subgroup called the Rocky Mountain School of Art. And what the Hudson River School, Rocky Mountain School of Art, is about is it's about representing the beauty of nature with great realism and romanticism. Uh, so the, the mid-1850s the, was the period of romanticism in literature and art, and they were at the forefront of that. Um, and that reflects my own idea about what art should be. That art should present uh, the beauty of nature and the beauty of our world um, and not um, uh, ugliness, hatred, uh, and, and hard uh, topics and subjects. I understand a lot of people do that in art. There's a place for it. But I feel like we get enough of that every day on the news, on the internet. Um, what we need is more of a dose of uh, calmness, of beauty, of majesty, of grandeur, of inspiration. And that's what I believe art should be. And that's the kind of art I like, and it's the kind of art that I like to produce. So I um, moved to Colorado um, in 2004, and I began to use Colorado as my home base for exploring the West. So 140 years later. Um, and uh, what I was inspired to do by this earlier exposure to uh, these Hudson River School artists was to create my own art in the same tradition. Um, but I had a problem, which was digital cameras, which were just coming out, did not give me the resolution I needed to print large scale uh, prints. Um, at the time, the digital cameras that were out uh, would yield a final print that was about uh, 11 by 16 inches. And if you tried to print any larger than that, um, the pictures were so pixelated, um, you would have to stand 50 feet away to, to, for it to even coalesce and make sense as a scene. So I went back to film. 
Um, I went back to a camera from the 1900s. Uh, this has been my primary camera for the last 10 years. Uh, this camera was made between 1893 and 1903 by the Rochester Optical Company, which was later purchased by George Eastman and folded into Eastman Kodak. And it uses single sheet film of 11 inches by 14 inches. Now, what I do is I use a hybrid photography system where I use film in the field because there is so much information that I can capture on a sheet of film that's this size. And then I can scan this film uh, to digitize it to be able to print and use a digital printer. Um, and that way I get the best possible quality I can get, the highest resolution in the image capture in the field, and the highest resolution and uh, sharpest print I can get using uh, digital laser printers um, to, to produce the final print. So it's ultimate quality on the front end, ultimate quality on the back end. So I've spent 15 years going to uh, the places that to me have the greatest scenic beauty uh, in the West and in the American Southwest. And I go over and over and over and over again because it takes a while to get familiar with the place, to figure out what's the best time of day to get the optimal lighting, even the best day of the year uh, to get the optimal lighting. And then it's all dependent on weather and going and going to try to get the optimal weather conditions to produce the kind of print I want to create the emotional response that I want in the viewer. So uh, this has been my passion and obsession for the last 15 years. I'm extremely happy to be launching this website and share my work with you. I hope you find something you like that you would like to um, add to your home or office that will inspire you that will make you happy, that will, every time you pass it or, or look at it, give you that feeling of, my, we live in a wonderful world. How lucky I am to be alive. How great it is that I have the eyes and the mind and the senses that I can enjoy this and just drink it in and use that to fuel you in whatever your, your pursuit and your passion is. Thank you for coming. Enjoy looking around. If um, you have a particular question about a piece or need some advice about you know, what might work best in your setting, feel free to contact me. Uh, I'm, putting, I'm putting this work out there because I want to share it. I, I'm, I'm confident there are people like me uh, who enjoy our national parks, who enjoy the beauty of nature, and would like to have um, some of this work that I've produced uh, to um, enjoy every day. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. 